sharing it on the things. Um, I don't see the live video yet. There it is. Yay. <laughs> Our mic is on. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Sorry. We'll get started real soon. Hey, Samantha. I'm not, I'm not able to share it. I'm not sure why. Silly Facebook. Where am I sharing it to? Um, I'll, if you could share it to the Bead Places group, that'd be great. And I'm sharing it to, I'm sure that they've got me covered, but I'm just sharing it to the Great Bead Extravaganza. They're good. They're on it. They're more on it than we are. <laughs> Oh, there we go. It's there. Is it, can I pin it? Oh, there we go. I don't know why. I, d I did turn it off, it's but it's right on. Now. It is? If it's not blinking, it's on. Okay, well, maybe it was the computer audio. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hi, everybody. We'll get started real soon. We're just figuring out the the audio um, idiosyncrasies and trying to. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Sarah. I see you. I see us on GBE, but I didn't. Um, uh oh, what'd you do? Thanks, everybody. Yeah, we know. We know the mic is on. We're just kind of. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Tech technical issues. We're we're gonna get started real soon. We good? Do you want me to just turn this mic on and hope it switches? It's on. I don't know how it's picking it up. Okay, that's fine. Oh, you know what? We've got all this extra fancy equipment, everybody, and we're we it normally works. <laughs> yeah, we don't we don't have the picture on yet. I just we just wanted to make sure that we had the audio sorted out first. Um, we'll get started in just a second. We just, uh, had a little bit of a tech issue. It's because it's not streaming through OBS. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Okay. Are we ready to go then? Yeah. I mean, I can see that the audio is coming through on both the live stream on Facebook. Um, and I assume it's on YouTube too. Nice to see everybody. Thanks, Andrew. <laughs> okay, I guess we're ready. Hi, everyone. Can they see me? Can they hear me? Yay. Okay. Well, today we are going to be making the Illuminating Bloom bracelet. Yay. Sarah just said she sees us on YouTube and Great Beat Extravaganza. Awesome. Hey, Alex, can you switch to the project screen so we can give them a closer look at what they're making today? 
So this is what we're going to be making today. Now we do have kits available for this project. Um, and the kit is linked in the description of this video. Um, and then we'll also go in in the comments and add um, product links and everything as we go. So this is a memory wire bracelet that's disguised as a knotted bracelet. It's kind of like a cuff but it has a clasp just for extra security. So we're featuring this beautiful apple blossom button by Tierra Cast because it's the spring fling, so why not feature some flowers? Now, these bracelet colors are affectionately referred to around the shop as the um, ketchup and, well, maybe it's just me who calls them this, but the ketchup and mustard bracelets because I love ketchup and mustard, but our original inspiration for this bracelet was the Pantone color um, illuminating. So we have these beautiful vintage glass beads. We often, um, as a bead store, we often get opportunities to um, buy really old collections and stashes of vintage beads um, in mass. Uh, that have just been sitting there for a long time. And a lot of them are really weird. And a lot of them are really ugly. <laughs> to, to the average person, they would think, why would anyone make jewelry out of that? But um, I love every bead. There's a joke, every bead is sacred. And I'm sure some of you get the humor behind that. Um, but these, these beads just called out to me begging to be made into something. Now, these beads as they started were just their plain color, but we went in and added a kind of vintage bronze patina to the top of them to really bring out the beautiful shape of these beads. So we have limited quantities of these kits because these beads are vintage. They're really obviously limited edition, but we do have several kits left. So make sure to head on over to our website if you're interested in picking up a kit. Now, <laughs> onto the project. Um, as I get my material set up, I just wanna remind you, we are a brick and mortar bead store right outside of St. Louis, Missouri. We've been open over 15 years now and um, we love what we do. So, <coughs> We are working with memory wire today. Now, if you picked up a kit, you will have a couple of coils of memory wire. We're going to make sure that we are working with uh, at least a cut and a half of memory wire just to make it easy for us to work with. Now, you probably have um, more than that in your um in your kit because we like to give you some extra. Um, but one warning before you cut your memory wire, you need to make sure that you are using a memory wire cutter. Do not use your good wire cutter whenever you are working with memory wire because it will damage it. So this is a memory wire cutter. We do have these available in uh, our web store. Alex, are you able to drop the link to the memory wire cutter that I sent to you? Um, otherwise, if you just go to the website and you can just type in memory wire cutter. Like I said, we're having some technical difficulties today. Um, but anyway, <laughs> yeah, I love, Mary, I love vintage beads and we have a ton of them in our online, or not in our online store, in our brick and mortar store. Because we're a bead shop and we have a ton of like weird stuff. There's no way we could list everything online, but we do virtual shopping. So feel free to message us if you want a virtual shopping appointment. Where's the document? Oh, I didn't send a document. I sent you a text message. Probably sent it as, should have sent it as a document. So go to search and then type in memory wire cutter. Okay, so back to the project. So what we're going to do is cut so that we have two pieces of memory wire that are about one and a half loops. Now, yeah, <laughs> Um, so now what we're going to do is string our beautiful vintage focal bead onto both of our memory wire pieces. Now, if it doesn't want to go on right away, just twist it back and forth a little bit. Don't force it. You want to just kind of twist it until it finds its way on. These are glass, so you don't want to be rough with them. Now, what I like to do is string my first one through to the middle 
and then string my second one through to the middle. Oh, thank you. They're helping you out in the comments. <laughs> I, 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 I oh, <laughs> I was ill prepared today. I should have thought to um, send everything to Alex in a way that he could easily access it from the computer where he'd be working. So I've just worked my memory wire through like this, and you can see that I have opened it up, and that's just going to allow for me to more easily work on my project. Now, when you're working with memory wire, Sometimes the beads can fall off the end. <laughs> so there's a couple of different products that I want to show you. Um, just some tips and tricks that I love to use when I'm working with memory wire. So first, there's the classic bead stopper. These are also available in our web store. Um, you can clamp this on and that's fine. That works very well. But I'm going to show you a little secret. This is an industry secret. Oh, thanks, Andrew. I'm kind of rambly today. This little guy right here, are you able to manually focus on that? Because it's so tiny, I don't know that they're going to be able to see it. I can back up a little. I just want to give them a good look. Maybe not. I'll stop moving it. Yeah, maybe stop moving it. <laughs> can you guys see what that is? This is a rubber stopper for earrings. So what I like to do as I'm working on one side and then want to go back to the other, I'll just slide that on the end of my memory wire and you can reuse them. So I just thought I'd mention that. You'll see me using this as the project progresses. Okay, so we're going to start working with one side of our beadwork now and then head over to the other. So just pick a, a quadrant and we're going to start stringing. So the first thing that we're going to do uh, past our vintage centerpiece is we're going to string our tiara cast washers so if you got a kit we've got a little washer here i'll make sure i can show that to you properly so these little heshi washers we're going to string that on and then a cute little three millimeter mustard color fire polish bead that has a beautiful flash and then we have this really fun metallic gold and bright canary yellow, like the illuminating color for the year, large jumbo seed bead. Now I like to kind of put the metallic side of the seed bead. I string that on first and kind of keep cohesive with that, but you can do whatever you want. And then I do another washer and then a brighter, little baby three millimeter fire polish bead. So our section should look like this so far. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is, for now I'm just gonna clamp my bead stopper here and I'm gonna complete that on the other side. So where's everybody watching from while I string this second? section that you've already seen me string. While I'm stringing this, I do want to mention, um, if you didn't watch the preview party yesterday, you might not know, we are doing some fun giveaways. With any GBE purchase, you are entered to uh, win a fantastic random new product featured by Beatsmith. So this is what we've got so far. And we will repeat that on the other side of the memory wire. So you can see I've got my memory wire opened like this. But of course, eventually we're going to kind of connect it together like this. Oh, all the people from Arizona. I want to go to Arizona. Oh, I see somebody from St. Louis. That's where we're from. Have you been to our store before, Deanne? Arnold, awesome. Oh my gosh, a lot of people from Arizona today. Well, that's cool. Oh no, I lost my, oh, I just stole a spacer from the 
<laughs> from the wrong side. What I like to do, and I'm a little out of the screen here, but what's right here is um, me having set up my beads in a line. I like to prep my work first, but you can see I've got three of my quadrants done. This time what I'm gonna do is put my little ear wire stopper on it so you guys can see how that works. And these little ear wire stoppers are tight on here. So they're not going anywhere. You can drop this. Yeah, I'm down for an Arizona compound. Hey, Kelly. I wish I would have gotten to see more of your presentation last night. The store was open yesterday and we were busy. <laughs> yeah, Sue, come see us. So you can see that this little stopper is tight on here and these beads aren't going anywhere. Now, we have a really cool kit that we feature around Christmas time. It's a Swarovski snowflake. And uh, it's like one of those wire, like memory wire snowflake forms. And because there's, I think, what, six, eight uh, different like spikes, it's hard to put a bead, it's awkward to put bead stoppers on the ends of all of them while you're working. So we include these little, uh, ear wire stoppers on the, or in the kit so that you can just slide them on. And a lot of our customers just leave them there because they're clear and it's easier than doing, um, than twisting the ends. So this is what we have so far. Feel free if you've got the kit to take a screenshot of this or come back through and watch the video after the fact but I just want to give you guys a moment to see what we've got so far on the main focal piece of our project. Yeah, that's that's what these are, Pammy. They're, they're earring stoppers. That's exactly what they are. Okay, so here we go. I am going to start cutting my tubing now. So we did a little gold dust on our brown tubing just to kind of make it more special. First, what I'm going to do is cut half inch sections of my tubing. So I'm going to cut four half inch sections. Now, what I like to do is um, either use a wire cutter or a really sharp pair of scissors to cut this. Mm -hmm. We're creating these little sections that are like spacers between our beaded sections. This jewelry tube product is fantastic. Um, it allows you to kind of save money <laughs> by not using as many beads. Um, so, oh, you ran over time. I'm, I'm trying to stop rambling so much so that that doesn't happen to me. And I know we started a little bit late. So what I'm gonna do is cut four half inch, half inch sections here. And the more uniform you can get them, the better. But of course, I'm holding this far away from my face. So forgive me if they're not super uniform. In my YouTube videos, I always tell people that uh, normally I perform a lot better when I don't have a tripod between me and my work. I don't have that excuse this time because the tripod's in front of me. But see, I've got little half inch section. So now what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to string them onto my work. So I'm going to start with the side that I just finished that I didn't put a stopper on and I'm just going to string it on. Now this tubing is great. No, Rose, Rosemary, it's not leather. It's rubber tubing. It is one of my favorite products of all time. We use it in so many of our YouTube videos. And so it looks like leather. It's got a great matte finish on it. And what's also cool about the matte finish. Oh, how did we add the gold dust? Gilder's paste. We love us some Gilder's paste. Um, so yeah, what's great about the matte finish is that uh, because it's kind of textural, it really holds on to some of those patinas um, and surface applications really well. And you can go in and seal it too after the fact, to see what, we, what we've got so far. Cool. All right, so we're gonna add those to the other side. And then these um, 
pieces of jewelry tube also kind of behave in the same way as our rubber stoppers. So once we've got these jewelry tube pieces on, I don't feel the need to go it back in um, and add either a bead stopper or a rubber stopper. So I'm gonna take my bead stopper off the other end and start stringing on the other side. Oh, I'm doing okay on time. I'm, I'm getting nervous. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm still in the first section of the project. Okay, so you can see we've got this so far. And I'm going to string the other side. And while I do that, I just want to say that everybody who has presented so far has done a fabulous job. I haven't had a chance to go back in and watch everybody's present, the, the entire presentations from everybody, but the few moments between customers yesterday, I kind of snuck a peek and everybody did great. And you want to know how I know that everybody did great? We had people in the store all day who had watched presentations and they decided they needed to come to their local bead shop to buy <laughs> materials to create items that they were inspired to create from the presentations. So I just think that's awesome. You guys did a great job inspiring everybody. And that's the goal from this. And then also on the back end of things, um, everybody has done a great job just kind of putting this together. And I'm so appreciative to be a part of this really fun event. Well, Kathy, if yellow is not your color, check this out. We've got a red version too. And I was thinking that the yellow was really going to be the most popular kit, but they're about 50-50. So we've got the illuminating bloom yellow and then also the illuminating blue or illuminating bloom kit in red, just because I know yellow is not everybody's color. Oh, no, Kathy, that's so sad. Hopefully they'll somebody will pop something up in your area. But this is what we've got so far. Okay, on to the kind of tricky part. It's not really tricky, but it's the trickiest part of all of this. And so I want to make sure you guys are paying attention. Is Gilder's Paste what you used on the Vintage B2? Yes, Gilder's Paste is what we used on the Vintage B2. So I want to tell you guys that Gilder's Paste is like what after 12 to 24 hours, it is what they call permanent. Now, what they call permanent is different than what I call permanent. It's not like a Duracoat or a shield finish or anything. These aren't bracelets that you want to wear swimming or um, not take off when you go to bed or like wear in the shower. Yep, yellow and red are the only colors because these beads are vintage limited edition beads. However, we have all of these products available where you can kind of create your own projects um, with your own beads. So uh, you can easily just kind of mimic this with a super duo on either side if you don't have a single double hold bead to go in the middle. No, Sally, we don't have a discount code. Our website is like really, really, really old. And we are working actively on um, building a website that will allow for discount codes. But what we try to do to compensate for that is just keep our prices really fair. Um, and we're also doing giveaways, just random surprise uh, gifts with every, um, so a gift with every purchase and then um, random extra giveaways of featured Beadsmith products for the year. So, yeah, don't roll around on the concrete. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Earrings would be beautiful with this. Okay, back to the project. So, we've gotten our jewelry tube on. Now, what we're going to do is kind of close the project before we had it open like this. And now, we're going to close it. So, now, I'm going to do my best to kind of straighten my wire so that the ends are relatively even. And if you want to go so far as cutting the ends so that they're perfectly even, you can do that. So next, what I'm going to do is take one of these cute little bronze super duos. And Alex, if you could go in and make sure to the best of your ability that we're focusing on this super duo, that would be fantastic. So a super duo is a really cute little two hold bead and they are perfect for this project. I love using them to kind of anchor memory wire cuffs together. The tubing is sold in packages 
Um, and there's three colors available in the jewelry tube tubing. There's black, brown, and there is clear. And the clear is super fun to pop a colored soft flex through. <laughs> I love doing that because you just get a beautiful hint of color. So I am stringing this Super Duo on. And then also to that same side, I'm going to split my wires back again. And I'm going to string two of my little neon yellow size 11 seed beads. And I know it's real hard for you guys to see this. What I see in my camera monitor it is a lot clearer than what you guys can see because Facebook kind of degrades the video to make sure that it can go everywhere to everyone. Um, but you can go back in and watch this on our YouTube channel after the fact. And hopefully it'll be a little bit more clear. Okay, so we have our Super Duo. Let me back up so you guys can see. Super Duo and two 11s. Now what we're going to do is add our beautiful golden mustard Super Duo, which is this little guy here. Oh, Terry, thank you. Yeah, the waterfall bracelets... Honestly, that's my most grabbed bracelet. Anytime I want a statement, um, oh, you put a space in that link, so it didn't hyperlink. Um, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, the the waterfall bracelet. We've got a kit featuring the tubing for a ten wrap bracelet um, with some beautiful fire polish, and it is one of my favorites. Okay, so after that golden, oh, that's that's weird. I wonder why, oh well. Um, we can go back in and add links after the fact if it's not wanting to do what it wants to do. So after that golden super duo that we added, we're gonna add two more bright yellow. And then, oh, thanks Kelly. And then another bronze super duo. Alex, am I cut in tighter than what I'm seeing in the monitor here? And notice I'm kind of creeping up to the top. Um, <laughs> okay. I'll try to keep it more centered. Okay. So you can see here that we've got our tubing. Oh, can you go into manually focus? I see it's out of focus, but I don't know if that's just because it's so tiny or put my hand behind it. There we go. So we've got the tubing, a bronze super duo, two yellow seed beads, a gold super duo, two yellow seed beads, and then a bronze super duo. Okay, so at this point, if you want to add a bead stopper, you can, but this is kind of tied on here, so they're not going to fall off. Yeah, the tubing is really neat. Sarah or Kristen, I'm not sure who's commenting from Softlex. Or maybe somebody else said, I don't even know. <laughs> so I'm going to repeat this on the same side. Now, if you are um, not creating along with me, um, you can tell me in the comments what your most recent project color scheme is. I would love to know. I'm always interested in knowing what colors people are working on because I think it's kind of fun to know if people kind of create with the seasons or just with what they like. I don't think it has latex, but don't take my word for it. Um, I can follow up with Pepperell after the fact. Normally, I'm a uh, synthetic content uh, knowledge powerhouse, but that is only because we have... Um, oh, no, I put two seed beads on. Alex, cut that out of the video. <laughs> Sorry, I'm distracted. Um, so we've got a, a yarn store inside our bead store. And so I am always really interested in finding out what um, what the differences are between all the synthetics like polyamide versus polyester. Um, but I don't know about jewelry tube containing latex. I'm not quite sure. Ooh, purple and pink, awesome. Okie doke. Blue and purple. Now, do you guys find that you design with the seasons or do you find that those are just your favorite colors to work with? 
Ooh, greens and browns. I love it. I went through like a 10 year phase where all I did was like just neutrals and greens. And now I'm doing yellow and red. <laughs> I don't know if you noticed, but I tried to have ketchup and mustard themed makeup too today. So are you able to, I'll stop moving it so you can manually focus. There we go. Good job, Alex. Everybody, if you could click some thumbs up and hearts for Alex to let him know how much we love his camera skills or his editing. What is this? His know. skills. skills. So, yeah, okay. Yeah. So here is where we kind of venture off into our own sizing. So I've got just under a six inch wrist. So my section of jewelry tube that I'm going to cut next is going to be an inch and a half. So if you have a larger wrist than that, you can add a half inch or whatever. You do your own math to make it comfortable for you. Sometimes people like to wear memory wire bracelets like this, almost like a bangle. And sometimes you want it a little bit tighter, like a cuff. The memory wire size that we're using this project is two and a half. And so I find that that is the most um, kind of versatile size for everybody. But a tip that I can share with you is you can just gently pull this out a little bit if you need to have a larger fitting bracelet. Be careful. Don't pull it out so far that you're gonna pop this center bead. And you can also kind of stretch out your memory wire a little bit ahead of time. I just like keeping it tight so that I can work on it. Okay, so. What we're going to do now is take our tubing and cut four inch and a half sections. And so just to kind of recap, we've done this as part of the bracelet and we're going to cut an inch and a half section to bring us to the back of the bracelet. Okay. And so again, if you missed the first part, this is rubber tubing. It is our brown color. And then we kind of sprinkled some gold fairy dust on it. We used Gilder's paste to give it a beautiful gold wash. Oh, you guys are funny. You can behave as this, as the, though this is your home to make yourself at home in the chat. Okay, so we've got four beautiful shimmery inch and a half pieces of jewelry tube. And again, adjust this to your own fit. So we are now going to string these on. And this is where we wanna kind of make sure that everything's tight. If you want to make sure that none of that memory wire is showing, you can push everything really tight on. Sometimes if you didn't cut your pieces exactly even, you know, seeing the memory wire on the inside is maybe going to be inevitable, but do your best. So these longer pieces are going to be a little bit trickier to string on than the shorter pieces. But a trick that I can share with you is to kind of twist it as you put it on. And that's going to um, make it a little bit easier to go on. And then once it's all the way on the end, you can just kind of pull it. Gilder's Paste is almost like a um, better version of shoe polish. It is high intensity pigments mixed into a proprietary wax blend. Um, somebody, like if anybody else from any of the other presenters are watching, they might be a little bit more knowledgeable about what kind of waxes, but any of the research that I've done, it just says proprietary wax blend. So what's cool about Gilder's Paste is you don't need to really like thin it. You can use it dry. You can thin it with mere mineral, mineral spirits if you'd like, or paint thinner. Um, but I like using it dry. It's like a rub and buff kind of project or product. And then after 12 to 24 hours, depending on what you apply it to, and if you've used thinners, then it is set. And like I said earlier, it is what they call a permanent uh, finish. However, what they call permanent and what I call permanent is different. So this is one of those bracelets that you do not wear in the shower, or as Andrew said, you do not roll around in concrete with this bracelet. 
or gravel. I'm, I don't remember what you said. Hey, Terry. So if you're just joining us, we are stringing on our second set of four pieces of jewelry tube. Now, jewelry tube is rubber tubing. We sell it in packages on our website. And we can drop links. Yeah, it does look like fancy distressed leather. That what I, that's what I was going for. I don't, personally, I don't use leather in my designs. Um, but we have a wide variety of like faux leather and vegan leather products. And this is my favorite faux leather product of all time. We also have a really cool um, like vegan suede, um, like a lacing. And that's really cool too. Okie doke. So you can see what I've gotten here. Thankfully, <laughs> my ends are all about even. I wasn't expecting that. And then, whoops, we're going to just really work it tight. Now, you may experience while you're working with this that you get a little bit of that uh, Gilder's Paste excess. We made this really metallic. You might experience that you get this. Um, Abby, do you put it directly onto the tubing, or is that a step we do for this project? Um, no, we we put it on there for you. We we did the gold dusting on the tubing for you. Um, you don't have to buy builder's paste ahead of time. Um, so anyway, you might you might ex kind of experience some extra gold pigment rubbing off on your fingers, and that's just because we loaded it on. So um, you're fine, you're safe. You don't have to wear gloves. It washes off with soap and water. If you happen to experience a little bit of builder's paste rubbing off on your fingers while you're working with it. And once you work with it, it's not going to keep rubbing off on your wrist or anything. We, Like I said, we just really kind of metallicked it up on this. Yeah, yeah, Mira, Gilder's Paste can be used on anything. It was actually, um, they started out using it for like framing. So like picture frames, they used it as like a, a, gil a, a gilding for picture frames and then also in the wrought iron industry. So that's pretty cool. So here's our sample bracelet we've gotten to here so far. And now we're gonna do these cute little fancy beads at the end. So we're gonna string an 11, a mustard three millimeter fire polish and an 11. And we're gonna do that one at a time this time. All right, so I'm gonna do my 11, my fire polish, and my 11. Okay, so here's the scary part. We're gonna cut. Always cover when you cut or make sure you're grabbing the end of the memory wire. What I'm gonna do is give myself at least an eighth of an inch, I prefer a quarter of an inch to make my loop. Now you wanna make sure you're using, again, a memory wire cutter. You do not want to use your regular cutter to cut this memory wire because it will damage it. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is cut. Now, if you want to, you can measure it out and mark with Sharpie so that all your loops are consistent. I'm not gonna worry about that this time because I'm on a little bit of a time crunch here, but you can do that if you wish. So I've cut. Another cool thing to do, is to wear safety glasses um, while you're working. I have glasses on, but if you are not a glasses wearer, you can wear safety glasses when you're cutting wire. So I've got a round nose pliers here. I wish this would focus a little better. Can you guys see that okay? I've got a round nose pliers here, and I'm going to just grab the very tip of the memory wire and get this out of the way. I'll bring this around the back so you can see. I'm gonna grab the tip of the wire with my, mem or with my round nose pliers. And I'm just going to curl that end in. We'll get back in frame so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm just going to curl the end in and create a loop. So I'm going to repeat that for all of my steps. Is the shop open on Sundays? Uh, not open to the public, but we do private shopping appointments on Sundays. We don't have any shopping appointments today because I'm here doing this. <laughs> All right, so now what I'm doing is I'm just replicating that. 
And we can just chat while I'm doing this. I'll kind of do it on screen so that y'all can see. I also want to thank everybody for being here with me today. I know for some of you, it's kind of early. I'm not normally a morning person. We're, it's later here, but my dad's not a morning person either. Some of you might um, know him from the sweet notes that he <laughs> leaves in your orders. If you've ordered from us, he is a part of our packing team. Oh, we don't. Oh, focus. There we go. Oh, my seed bead popped up. Yeah, that's another thing. Watch to make sure that you don't uh, crush your seed beads or um, get them caught in your loops. And you can always go back in and tighten those loops after the fact. So when you're making these loops, another thing to keep in mind is that you want to make sure that you are not making them so small that we're not going to be able to get that cording through them. 430. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's too early. I'm sorry. I appreciate that you're still up watching me. So now we're just traveling to the other side and we are going to do the same thing. You think looping pliers would work? Um, probably. I know a lot of people buy them specifically for memory wire. It depends on the size of your looping pliers. And then also with pliers like that, you want to make sure that you are very careful with them because we've got itty bitty fragile beads at the end and you don't want them to get in the way of those looping pliers um so it's that it's kind of iffy in my opinion okay so i've just strung my three beads on that side i'm gonna go back in and curl it now if you prefer you can actually use your chain nose pliers to curl the ends oops <laughs> you can actually use your chain nose pliers to curl the ends over. I just prefer the round nose pliers. Normally, I don't like grabbing wire with my round nose pliers because it will tend to put a dent in it. Um, but with memory wire, it's so tough that I almost sometimes feel like I need a like more direct, almost dig in with my round nose pliers in order to grab it and rotate your wrist. Another tip that I can share free or share with you is if you have wrist problems, don't like hold it like this and crank your wrist around like don't overextend your wrist because that hurts i've got wrist problems so what i do is i'll either bend my project or i'll just do a little crank not all the way just a little crank and then kind of rotate where my project is so i can do like a second crank to close it does that make sense Okay, <laughs> so I'm going to string the last section of beads. I just love all these beads. They're so special and so flashy. So I've got my section of beads, my last section here. I'm going to cut the end. and go back in with my round nose pliers yeah that's a good tip some like if you've got if you got the real cheap pliers from the craft store um they might not be hardened all the way and also if you've got really really nice fine really fine pliers you may want to designate a pair of pliers that are like thick and chunky specifically for working with memory wire because memory wire is tough stuff Okay, so this is what we have so far. And now we're going to cover most of this up. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is kind of bring you in here and show you how to create this little loop. I'm using one of these knots that Kelly, my good friend Kelly, made famous, her barrel knot. 
we're going to use that barrel knot to cover up the silver memory wire at the end and make this look like a knotted leather bracelet. Mm. Then I'll kind of bring you back in and show you the secret underside of how to attach the beautiful tiara cast button. Okie doke. So we're going to start with a foot of our special fancy gilded gold dust um, jewelry tube. So, and again, sometimes I use scissors to cut this. Sometimes I use my um, wire cutters to cut this. Totally up to you. So what I'm going to do is string this through the ends of my, well, one side of my loops that I just made. And I'm going to string it to the middle. So I like to put my two ends together and just kind of slide it down. Like that. Okie doke. So now I'm going to take one end of my um, wire, my tubing, and I'm going to start to do a barrel knot that's just kind of right over these beads. So how I do that, Alex, if you could really be on it to try to get this focused so everybody can see as clearly as possible. So I'm going to loop just one side back over itself. So this is the side that comes down. I'm going to bring that back up. And I'm going to do one, two, three loops. And then I'm going to bring the tail end through those three loops. Now there is an art to this. And my good friend Kelly has a wonderful tip. She likes to put like a bead tube through it and then slide the bead tube out at the end. I'm used to doing it by my hands, so that's the only reason why I do it with my hands. But you see how it starts to make this really cool knot? We're just going to really carefully work that knot tighter and kind of closer to the end to cover that silver memory wire end. Now, you can use gold-plated memory wire if you want. I don't like the color <laughs> with these. I just, I think I... You were covering the whole thing anyway. Why not just use the brighter kind of silver? So I'm just working on getting this tightened. And you can see how it just kind of covers those ends there. And so now what we're going to do after we pull that end and get it real tight, we're going to repeat this right here. So with our finished bracelet, you can see we've gotten one here. We're going to do another one here. Now, you'll notice that one side of our cording is a lot longer than the other side now. And that's good because we want to have that longer side to complete our second knot. Another thing, if you're struggling with this barrel knot, an alternative is just to do an overhand loop knot. So just loop it and bring the ends through. And that's totally okay, too. Whatever you want to do for your bracelet, go ahead and do it. So again, we're going to loop over with the longer side. One, two, three. And then bring the tail end through. And so sometimes it can get a little discombobulated. Sometimes you just have to undo it and start over. And there's nothing wrong with that. So you can see I'm keeping it fairly close to the other knot. But as I tighten it, I'm kind of stretching it out a little bit so that I'm able to make a space big enough for my button to go through. Like that. Okay, now we're gonna make this super fancy. <laughs> and this step is optional. I know a lot of people don't like extra little danglies on their bracelets, especially if they work with their hands a lot. Um, but I like extra danglies, so we're going to do extra danglies. So what I like to do is take one of my leftover beads here, 
and I'm going to kind of like force it onto my tubing. Now, one tip that I can share with you if it doesn't want to go on right away is you can cut your tubing at what we like to call an extreme angle. <laughs> and once it has a tip on the end, it'll be easier for you to force it onto or through the hole of the bead. Oh, I need to cut that a little bit more extreme. Here we go. So what's cool about this tubing stuff is that it is stretchy. So because it's stretchy, you can kind of like force it <laughs> into some beads that you might not otherwise be able to fit it through. So you can see, Alex, are you able to kind of spot focus on that so they can see? Maybe not. You got it? As good as it gets? Okay, as good as it gets. So you can see I've got the end through and I'm just gonna use my pliers now at this point to help me kind of pull the bead onto it. Yeah, I always like danglies too. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Cut an extreme angle and I'll show you, like we want that really extreme like that. So I'm going to force that through my bead. Oh, good. I'm glad you can see. <laughs> I could it. <laughs> and then once the tip is through, you can use your pliers to kind of pull the rest of it through. It's yeah, it's actually it's streaming on our YouTube channel right now. And so after it processes, like after the live stream, it takes a minute to process, but it'll be available not only on our YouTube channel, but all of these are available for replay in the group as well. So this is what we've got so far. You can then decide the length that you want for your danglies and then tie a little overhand knot at the end to secure it. But yeah, if you guys haven't checked out our um, YouTube channel yet, we've got over 100 free video tutorials and we've got kits available for a lot of those projects as well. And there's always links in the video description for where you can find the products that we use in our tutorials. So I just did two little overhand knots at the end. And I love knotting with this um, <laughs> extreme beating. <laughs> anyway, I love knotting with jewelry too, because uh, especially when it's like, you know, gilded, because it just shows up so beautifully. It's like the knot gets kind of stretched. So it holds so nicely. Just like that. Okie doke. Now, I'm going to move on. I'm kind of getting a little bit short on time here. I'm going to move on to the button side of things. But if I've got enough time, I'm going to come back and show you how to add these little extra cutie pies on. If I don't have time, there's just jump rings in your kit. <laughs> and I just opened and closed jump rings onto the cord. If you want, you can go ahead and like string them on first before you add the beads. But I just really like opening and closing jump rings. Is that weird? I don't know. So we're going to take some of our extra cord. We're again going to cut it at what we call an extreme angle. And we are going to thread it through one. Get out of my way. <laughs> we're going to thread it through one of the empty sides of the memory wire. Then we're going to thread it through our button button emphasis on the T or the, yeah, I don't know, both T's maybe. We're going to thread it through, pull it up through if you need to. What I love about this project is like everything is a super tight fit. And that is so satisfying to me is when like everything fits together just perfectly. So button in the middle. Why won't you focus? Here we go. So we've got memory wire loop, button, memory wire loop, and then smush it all together. So pull just enough out 
of the one end that we can tie an overhand knot and we're gonna try to get this knot as close to the end as possible. So Alex, are you able to spot focus so they can see what I'm doing here? Thank you. Again, everybody, hats off to Alex. Like and love in the chat because he's doing a great job. I could not do this without him. I am not technically inclined. So we've got an overhand knot there and we're just gonna tighten it Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, we're just going to tighten it to the end. Oh, that's rough. Alex, can you do something? They can <laughs> I can't see it, so I know they can't. There we go. <laughs> so we're just going to tighten it here. And then pull it really tight on the other end. Oh, thank you. Yeah, great job, Alex. We're going to pull it really tight on the other end and go in for another overhand knot. And then we gave you a lot of extra tubing in the kit. So you can play with this and have fun. It's great on soft flex. It's great to run craft wire through, or you can just knot it on its own. We've got a lot of really fun projects that you can, um, on the YouTube channel that you can get creative with and put your own spin on. So Alex, if you can go in and spot, it might do it on its own, but I've got something in the way. So you can see I've got cute little knots on either side here, and that just holds the button on. Now you can leave these long if you want. That's A-OK. -okay. I like to leave a little bit. No, I don't put glue on it because jewelry tube is so cool. It's like stretchy. So when you tie the knot, it holds well. But if you are wanting to put glue just to like feel a little bit safer, go for it. I have never really needed to add glue, um, but I'm certainly not telling you not to put glue on it. Okay, here we go. Isn't that cute? I love this button so much. It kind of makes the bracelet reversible too. So I'm just going to go ahead and close this. So you can get a better look at the end. Isn't that pretty? <laughs> Tearcast makes such great products. They just make me happy. Okay. Yeah, so we do normally have Gilder's Paste. We're sold out right now, but I'm sure you can get it at um, places like Allegory Gallery or BeadShop.com. I think maybe Goody Beads might have it. Um, if any of you guys are in the chat, feel free to drop links to your um, stores if you've got Gilder's Paste. Okay, so I know we don't have much time, but I am going to go ahead and do my world-famous jump ring demonstration. You guys might give me a hard time for this because everybody does. If you've been watching my YouTube channel for a while, you might know that I kind of have like a thing. <laughs> Anytime I demonstrate opening and closing jump rings, I've got this... Um, visual can you bring oh thank you okay so anytime you open and close a jump ring you want to open and close it like this and never like this so we're twisting open like this and never like this when you open and close it this way it's going to put less stress on the structure of the jump ring it's going to harden it less it's going to make it um, a lot easier also to get it closed in its original position you're not going to misshape in it and then you're going to have a lot easier of a time going in to close it so i'm going to quickly 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 hey rebecca i'm going to go in and quickly do that with my pliers so where we switched over when i did that probably not sorry i'm jumping ahead of things. So I've got one pliers in this way. I'm going to, my break is at 12 o'clock. I'm going to bring the other pliers in this way. And I'm just going to rotate my wrist to open it like that. So I'm going to quickly add my jump ring right on to the end there and then close it. Now, as I said before, you can open and close these jump rings ahead of time and string them on before, um, like before you put your beads on. But 
I just like throwing extra tips at you. And I also just like opening and closing jump rings. So I just wanted to ah! wanted to do that. <laughs> oh, I'm not in I'm not on screen. So um, to finish the kit, we just do three jump rings on each little dangle. And I'm just gonna do three on one of them, but you guys get the idea. You would repeat this and do it um, on the other dangle. And we've got a cute little finished bracelet. So thank you so much everybody for watching, not only my presentation, but everybody's presentation. Um, as I'm sure you've heard, uh, this is a volunteer collaboration and we all work really hard, especially <laughs> especially the others. I, I, um, I just, I'm amazed at how everyone is able to pull it off each time. <laughs> we all have jobs outside of this um, and we all kind of, um, I don't know, most specifically everybody else, but I kind of feel like everybody's miracle workers, honestly. Um, so yeah, I just, I appreciate everybody's patience with us as we experience technical issues sometimes. Um, and also we just appreciate your kindness, um, all of you. And then also I appreciate all the other presenters so much for including me. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching. Just a reminder, we've got that, uh, the gift with every purchase from our website this weekend. And also we've got a ton of extra awesome products uh, that are featured products of the year from Beadsmith that we're giving away to anybody who makes a purchase, anybody who has made a purchase for the kit um, or who makes a purchase on our website this weekend. Thanks for watching.